A lot of anime is sad. Edward Elric is sad. Lagoshi is sad. Shinji is sad and horny. Well, that could be said for all three of them, but how come all these boys are sad? Well, honestly, it's just good writing. These characters feel the appropriate emotions that correlate with the situations that they've each been thrown into, and that allows all of us empaths of the world to relate and see a small part of ourselves within the story. Me and Shinji are definitely the same. But for somebody like me, who consumes a lot of this stuff on a daily basis, at times, it can feel extremely overwhelming. I end up sponging up all of those sad moments from each of my favorite shows, and they reside within my soul until the next time I have beans on toast. And I've only had beans on toast once in my life. Sometimes, I just want to be taken to a place where I can relax. A place that's peaceful with no otherworldly threat. A place where I can smile and feel like I'm fishing in Final Fantasy XV. That was a big part of the game for me. And maybe minus that last part, but even still so, the show that ended up making me feel all those things was Nan Nan Biori. Nan Nan Byori is a slice of life comedy about four girls living in rural Japan. Whoa, 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 what just came out of my mouth? Slice of life? Comedy? If you tried to sell me on this like a year ago, there's no way I would ever watch this. I've always hated slice of life and Yokohama. Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko was a manga that changed my perception of how a slice of life could be made. High school, very little character development, and whatever the hell that is, it took those preconceived notions that I had made about slice of life and flipped it on its head. It showed me that characters didn't need to be in high school, and just because it's a slice of life doesn't mean that they can't develop in major ways. I was entranced by this post-apocalyptic, quiet story that took place in rural Japan. Themes like the passage of time, or the fact that the world was a major character in and of itself really appealed to me, and I think that this manga opened my eyes up to the idea of not just slice of life, but countryside slice of life. Especially because it's been like six months since I've read it, and I still think about this manga almost every day, so yeah. Let's go again. Nanan Byori is a slice of life comedy about four girls living in rural Japan. And let me tell you, there is a shit ton of rural Japan. Nature? Huh? Trees? What? Bushes? Hello? I've only seen these in their block forms, they look so HD. Every episode starts with the sound of cicadas. You know, that same ass sound that every anime uses that goes Environments, wildlife, scenery, they're all huge themes in Nan Nan Byori. And as the show goes on, you get to see how these environments change with each season. Spring, hot girl summer, winter, Foo Fighters fall. Each season directly correlates to what characters do and how they'll interact with the world. When it's summer, they'll go to the beach and always be trying to cool off. When it's winter, they'll go skiing and build not snow man, but snow men. Look at the beautiful autumn leaves. <gasps> Flying squirrel? Was I the only one that was obsessed with these things as a kid? Also, spider monkeys? The amount of variety and versatility that Nan Nan Byori is able to pull off is insane. It makes the world feel alive, like time is really passing and these characters are growing instead of maybe just the school year is going by. Oh no, the school year is gonna end, we gotta find somebody for the club. And speaking of school, I wanted to talk about episode one because it basically sets up the entire series. Yes, that is the entire series. What I actually mean by this is not necessarily that the show sets up the characters and the world, because that's pretty standard. Instead, I'm talking about a point where the anime hits this very specific emotional beat that it continues to replicate almost every single episode. And of course, it never worked on me. I never cried once while watching this show. I would never do that. I'm 18 years old now. Oh, dude, it's too much, man. <laughs> Hotoru is a transfer student in fifth grade that's coming all the way from Tokyo to this magical place where buildings are few and far between and cows exist. She's come to class to find out that only three other girls attend her school. That's how small this place really is. And by the way, none of them are the same age as her. Renge's in kindergarten, Natsumi's in seventh grade, and her older sister Kamari is in eighth grade. They also technically have a brother who never speaks a word during the entire show but sits in the corner for added comic effect, but he's a side character so I won't really mention him from here on out. The entire episode is basically just the 
girls showing Hotarun around. They show around the school, they play a game of dodgeball, she meets Renge's pet Tanuki, which like, okay, kawaii, and of course, the end. At this point in the episode, Hotaru is kind of feeling unsure about moving to the countryside. It's a land that is so foreign to her, especially coming again from Tokyo. It's the classic story of a city girl moves to a non-city world, and as she's at the peak of this uncertainty, the show hits you with this shit. At the end of their day, after tons and tons of walking, they make their way up a hill, and lo and behold, there's a giant cherry blossom sakura tree in full ass bloom telling you straight to your face, hey man, if you ever fall down, I'll pick you back up, and maybe we'll also eat some beans on toast together. This scene really solidified in my head just how special this show really is, as well as how much more it could be, because I'm not gonna lie to you, this first episode definitely isn't the most exciting thing in the world. It's no 88 jingle video, that's for sure. In fact, I found it kind of weird how all the girls were different ages and attended the school with literally fucking nobody but their teacher who's just Renge's older sister. Like I get that it emphasizes how they're from the countryside, but what can they really do with such a strange cast of characters? The relationship between two sisters. The story of a fleeting friendship. The realization of life and death. These are only a few ideas that Nanan Byori swings for, and it absolutely hits it out of the park. It's not only one of the most wholesome shows that I've ever watched, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second, but it can also cover serious topics in a positive light. I sort of just stumbled into all this because one day I was watching some random video, and it described Nanan Byori as an anime where the small moments matter. And I think that's definitely true. The relationships between these characters and how the show pulls them out and portrays them is some of the most raw shit shit in all of anime. It captures those little moments you've had with friends and family and showcases them at the forefront of everything, which is basically what a good slice of life should do. It shouldn't be this show that you look down upon for having cliche characters, cliche plot, and be something that you mindlessly watch while scratching your ass. Instead, it should take those slices of life and magnify them to show how special those seemingly dull moments can really be. Picture inside a picture inside a picture inside a picture is what Kubrick once said one time, I think. Out of everything though, my favorite part of the show definitely has to be the relationship between Renge and this girl named Kaede, who is basically Sundere that runs a candy store. However, it's not really revealed until later on just how much of a soft spot she has in her heart for Renge. That's because when Renge was a baby, Kaede used to watch and take care of her, so they have this past together and it's honestly cute as fuck. Their dynamic is best shown off in season 2 episode 10 where Kaede teaches Renge how to ride a bicycle without training wheels. And fuck dude, this shit is so good. I cried so hard while watching it. I can't even describe to you just how broken I was after watching this episode because this show is just so wholesome. <laughs> Multiple times while watching Nan Nan Byori, my jaw has been on the floor. It feels sort of embarrassing to care this much about what looks to be a cute little slice of life comedy, but that's just how I feel. And it also just so happens that I care a lot and I'm emotionally vulnerable for Twitter followers. At 88 Jingle, please follow me, I will die. On the other side of the emotional scale, <laughs> did you hear that? That was me laughing, and that's exactly what Nan Nan Byori makes me do. Up until this point in the video, I've sort of just skipped over the comedy aspect of the show in favor of wholesomeness. But now I think it's important to mention just how funny Nan Nan Byori really is. I found that the chemistry between these characters constantly jived with my sense of humor and kept my comedy brain entertained and fed well the whole time, and that's a hungry motherfucker. A lot of these bits flow so well and you don't even realize they were adapted from a manga. Too often does a comedy anime feel disjointed, where you can tell when a chapter starts and when a chapter ends, but in Nan Nan Byori, it's literally so seamless. The way they adapted all three seasons, even though they came out so many years apart is genuinely impressive and something that Silver Link should be praised for. Even little things would crack me up, like the way Renge learns hopscotch in this episode and then uses it again passively in this episode, or the way this girl jumps up when she gets excited. 
There's a lot of little things to pay attention to, and it feels extremely rewarding to connect the dots in your head like your brain cells are being tucked in for a good night's sleep. And listen, I'm not gonna pretend like I grew up in rural Japan or any rural place at all. I never went vegetable collecting, I never created little dolls to make the rain go away. In fact, I grew up in the most suburban area ever. We have Denny's, we have Taco Bell, and then another Denny's. But watching Nan Nan Biori, it reminded me of when I used to go outside. Ew, I used to do that. And just play pretend. Harry Potter was a pretty fire game game to play. I remember casting spells and running around. We would call each other pee-pee heads and trip on our own feet every five minutes. It was chaos out there. This one time, my cousin and I did a whole ass soap opera play in my backyard, completely improvising the whole thing, because who needs to memorize lines when you have every episode of the Backyardigans at your disposal? What I'm trying to say is that Nan Nan Biori did a lot of things for me. It made me laugh, it made me cry, I probably reevaluated my life a couple times watching it, but most importantly, it brought me back to a time when I wasn't just waiting for the next part of Chainsaw Man to come out. Where is it, Fujimoto? <laughs>